you. Good morning. Today is December 1st, 24 more days until Christmas. Um, this is the meeting of the Street Traffic and Refuse Committee meeting for the St. Louis Board of Aldermen. It is now called to order. Madam Clerk, if you would please call the roll. Alderman Boyd. Present. Alderman Vaccaro. Present. Alderwoman Boyd. Present. Alderman Bosley. Present. Alderwoman Martin. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Present. Alderwoman Peel. Here. Chairwoman Tyus. Present. Seven present, you have four. Thank you. Um, the next uh, order of uh, the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Um, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes of no Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. I'll make a motion we approve those minutes. So move. We second. need a second. Second. Yep. Okay, we have a, uh, have a motion and we have a second. Um, any discussion? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Alderman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Vaccaro. Aye. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Alderwoman Martin. Alderwoman Schweitzer. Aye. Alderwoman Peel. Aye. Chairwoman Tyus. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Thank you. Alderwoman Martin. Seven aye votes. By your vote, you've approved the minutes of Wednesday, November 10th, 2021. Thank you. The next order of business is board bills for review. The first board bill we have is board bill number 126, which is introduced by Alderwoman Tina Peel. I do want to say there was a second board bill that I had tried to place on the agenda, but because that was an actual street naming instead of an honorary street, there is a different process. When you have to rename a street, um, uh, years ago when I was a new older person, they put more stringent uh, requirements on it so that you can't just rename a street. So I didn't look at it. I thought it was an honorary street and then um, it wasn't. So we have to uh, uh, have that um, placed on a, um, an agenda and then also have it uh, set out for the public to know 15 days, I think, before. So we're going to come back to that one. Um, before we uh, get started, I, let me see here. There is one person here for Board Bill 127, David Mason. Is that correct? Correct. I don't see him, but um, okay. Should, yeah. Okay, well, we'll maybe we'll see him a little later. So we'll get started. And if he shows up, then we'll swear him in, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Madam Clerk, would you please read the introduction to Board Bill 127? Um, Board Bill 127 introduced by Alderwoman Tina Peel, an ordinance recommended by the Board of Public Service to conditionally vacate above surface, surface and subsurface rights for vehicle, equestrian and pedestrian travel and Pacific Avenue from Papin Street to Shuttle Avenue in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, as here and after described in accordance with Charter Authority and in conformity with Section 1-4 of Article 21 of the Charter and imposing certain conditions on such vacation. Okay, thank you. Um, Alderman Peel, you recognized on Board Bill 127? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, I fully support board by 127. It is a street vacation and the petitioner is M and H Pappen LLC, which is owned by David Mason. Uh, he seeks to have a street vacation on Pacific from Pappen to Chodo, which is located in Forest Park Southeast. He wants to, we want to consolidate a few parcels of land so he's able to better maintain this block. Um, he has been, and his business has been in the community since 1993. And uh, he really um, loves his community. And I, I would note that because in his name, he has used Pappen, which is a street 
in Forest Park Southeast as M and H Papin. Um, he wants to make sure that this street, and he wants to intend that this street will be safer than it is for his employees. And so if he gets this street vacation, this will make it possible. Some of the things he's intending to do on the street is to provide security lights and security in the parking lot in order to um, maintain the safety of individuals. One of the things in terms of this street, as he wants to consolidate the parcels, is that there are individuals that are crossing through the property and they're leaving debris and litter. And so this street vacation will just give him a better opportunity more effectively to maintain this area and also helps in terms of the ward, in terms of not having to use as much ward capital to maintain the area. So um, I would like to have um, Mr. Mason, if he's here, um, to speak. Uh, okay, he's not here. So what we're gonna do is let um, people who, uh, members of the committee, if they have any questions for you, is that all right, Alder Woman? That is okay. Um, I also missed uh, one thing regarding this uh, board bill is that the surrounding uh, industries, um, such as Union Pacific Railroad, uh, Sterling Lacquer and Company, and Extra Space Storage, also support this um, board bill and the street vacation. They all have written in letters of support. So they are really excited if this can happen because they know they're going to benefit too regarding Mr. Mason's. Um, ability to maintain the street. Mr. Mason also has uh, another piece of land at 800 Vandevender. It's his office and he has been maintaining that area too. Okay. So I am open to questions. All right, and I see you have a petition for vacation of waiver of damage for, from several people and you also have a map attached to your board bill. Okay. Okay, Alderman Bosley, do you have any questions? Um, I don't, uh, thank you. Alderman Boyd. No questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Alderman Vaccaro, any questions? No questions. Alderwoman Boyd, any questions? No questions. Alderwoman, uh, Alderwoman Schweitzer, any questions? No questions. Thank you. And I guess that you don't have any questions of yourself, Alderwoman. So uh, since I don't have any questions, you are recognized to close. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Um, I ask for um, your favorable, favorable consideration to pass this bill uh, with a due pass recommendation. Okay. Um, I've entertained a motion that we pass out board bill 127 with a due pass recommendation. So That's moved. It. I'm sorry. Second. Okay, Madam Clerk, did you know who said what? Because I don't. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, uh, made the motion. I would want to swipe her and I uh, would second it. Okay. Uh, we, have a motion. we have a motion and a second and a call for the previous roll. Any objections to previous roll? Hearing none, Board Bill 127 is passed out with a due pass recommendation. But what you do when you when 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 you talk to uh Mr. Mason, you tell him it didn't get passed out and that you <laughs> All right, thank you so much, all the woman. <clears throat> You're welcome. Okay. He has actually been working on this um, street vacation since 2019. But he didn't show up, so now you gotta give him a hard time. <laughs> you can't let him get away with that. <laughs> okay, the next board bill we had is board bill 141. Um, introduced by Alderwoman Lisa Middlebrook, and she has several people that's gonna testify. But first, Madam Clerk, would you read the introduction to Board Bill 141? Board Bill 141, introduced by Alderwoman Lisa Middlebrook, an ordinance authorizing and directing the director of streets to permanently close, barricade, or otherwise impede the floor traffic on the 170 block of East Grand Avenue by, by blocking said traffic flow at the intersection of East Grand Avenue and North 2nd Street. Okay, and we have here that's gonna testify, David Nivens, I, did I see him? Okay, uh, Gian Zakar, Zazar, I'm not, how do you pronounce your last name, sir? Cesaro. Cesaro, okay, that's, I thought I was bad with the T name. You're last in everything with the Z name, right? You, you, <laughs> never, you never come first, do you? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to reverse it. We're going to do Z names first, okay? Because <laughs> I have a thing about Tyus, okay? <laughs> Being last all the time. Okay. Uh, we have Muhammad Ali is here, right? Yeah. And then we have David Work. Oh, you guys got a lot of people with. Yeah. We'll, we'll <laughs> have, they'll just be two of us speaking if that's okay. Um, and so who's going to speak? Uh, I will, David Yevis, uh, the plant manager, and then David Worth, our uh, union president. Okay, so then um, I'm, we're going to swear you in if you would both uh, raise your right hand and unmute, please, Worth and Nivens. Yeah. Um, please un unmute. Sure. You also. We're in the same room. Is it okay yeah. if I stay unmuted and they, I'll put them on camera? Yeah, this is us. Um, I'm sorry, what did you say? This, this is both of us on Gian's camera. We're in the same room at the plant. Okay, so you don't you can stay muted, but I can still hear it. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. that's fine. If you would both raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Um, so again. Who do we want to start with? Is I, I want to start with Worth. I told you because Nivens, you're in the middle and you're first all the time. <laughs> but if you want to start with Nivens, it, no. not, is it Nivs or Nivens? Nieves. Nieves. Okay. All right. What is that? Hispanic? Yes, it is. Puerto Rican. Okay. All right. Um, so who wants to go first? You want to go first? Uh, maybe I'll kick it off yeah. um, real quick. So, um, you know, first of all, uh, I want to I want to thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee, uh, for allowing me to speak on this very important bill. Oh, I'm uh, so sorry. Let me stop you. Um, the the sponsor didn't get a chance to to speak about our bill, so you'll be after that, okay? okay I'm no sorry, problem. Alderwoman Woman Middlebrook. I was trying to nope. get you done in a hurry, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no problem. I was like, well, I'll just sit here and wait. But get it done. thank you. <laughs> Don't thank stop you, when they Chair. moving the bill along, right? <laughs> right. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to uh, do that. No problem. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Um, board Bill 141 is essentially a bill that is for safety. Um, I met with uh, several people from PNG and they had a water main break at this time. And what they found was when the street was closed, safety for the employees improved. There were no rolling gun battles coming down the street. No one was speeding, crashing into fences or concrete barriers. Um, and overall, employees felt much more safer getting into their cars to go to work and leaving work to come back into their cars. Um, so that's, that's basically what this bill is for. Um, there are no other businesses that will be affected from this closure, um, but it is really just to provide safety um, measures for people who are going in and, and leaving the plant. Um, and so that's what I have right now. And they have more information um, that they can provide to the committee. Okay. Um, just a question. So it's going to close it at Grand. Will it close it at the other end too, or just at that one end? Just at that one end. Okay. Um, all right. So now, uh, gentlemen, you can uh, make your your presentation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so thank you again, uh, Madam Chair, members of committee, and uh, Alderwoman uh, Middlebrook for giving us the time to speak and helping us with this bill. Um, my name is David Nieves. I'm the plant manager here at the Procter & Gamble plant. Uh, we have been here since 1927. Um, we have, we are one of the largest plants globally for Procter & Gamble. Um, and we're growing extremely rapidly. Part of our business, we make a lot of home care products and I hope everyone uses them uh, on this call. Um, <laughs> but we, you know, we have one of the largest expansions in the history of this plant happening right now. And our people work 24 seven in order to produce those products, uh, especially during these times of the pandemic and, and new strands. And so our biggest concern as uh, all the women in Middlebrook brought out is safety of our employees. Our shifts start at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. each day with our folks coming in uh, 5.30 and leaving at 5.30. And some of our day shift can work as late as 6, 7 p.m. each day. Um, we, we recently closed the street in July of 2021, um, for a building demolition permit that we acquired. 
And we also had several infrastructure uh, water failures, as was already mentioned. Uh, this had us close the street for the first time in 95 years, and we've seen several benefits. Um, so I wanna start by sharing that previous to the street closure, uh, we would have one to two gun, uh, random gunshots in the direction of the plant every three months. Um, these have uh, gone as, as bad as, um, you know, nearly hitting an employee. Uh, one of our contract partners, uh, the bullet landed, hit their shin and landed on their foot and the person was okay. There was several where obviously it was extremely traumatizing experience as they were walking out of the gate or walking down the street, um, hearing these gunshots. And this street is in an area that's not so well, I would say monitored because it's, it's in the back. And what it allows is these shots will happen and cars will you know, proceed on uh, without much, um, I would say urgency. Um, so the first one is just gun violence and we have seen zero uh, issues of gun violence in this area since the shutdown. This set the temporary closure that we have now for the permit. The second thing we see is very high speed car chases or races on Hall Street. Um, we have, we experience nearly one accident a month um, where a car flips into our fence, uh, damaging our property and putting our employees at risk. We've had an event where in four weeks, we had three very severe accidents and one very traumatizing one where an employee was trying to cross the street. Our plan is on two sides, both sides of Grand Street. Um, and as he was crossing the street, uh, the person swerved towards him and nearly hit him. Um, but since the temporary closure, uh, we have seen no car crashes. We have seen no uh, high-speed car chases in our area and no gunshots. Um, and while this was a temporary measure, I had that resounding uh, feedback from our employees of how they feel safe every day. And as we employ nearly 500 PNG employees and 500 contract partners and growing, we want to continue to keep everyone safe as we continue to operate this extremely large plant for this company. So I do appreciate, you know, the chair and the committee for allowing me to speak. David's going to say a couple words. Um, he's been here a long time and we really, you know, look for your help to help us with the safety, please. Okay, thank you. Mr. Worth. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is David Worth. I'll try to follow up. David speaks so well. Um, I, don't, I may not be as good a speaker as David, but um, anyways, uh, my name is David Worth. I've been here at the plant for 36 years. I've been the union president for the last 24 years. Um, really love the, the work of this plant. And the, I just want to say the company goes above and beyond to try to make sure we're all safe. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about when I first was employed and several years after I first came here, and, you know, we didn't have fenced in lots. You know, we used to sit out on second shift and have our lunch in the parking lot. And as time has gone by, um, the company has made it safer. They've fenced in the lots, we've gated the lots. So they've done all they could do to help us with that. Um, but as some of these examples, I've thought about some examples over the years and how it's progressively gotten worse. So I just wanted to share a couple of them. I know David alluded to one, but, um, you know, one that's kind of dear to our heart. We had a, a very well-liked nurse here at the site and on our way to the parking lot, um, she was accosted and, they were, and some individuals were trying to grab her and get her into a car. She was able to slip away. Um, she resigned right after that. So we lost one of our nurses that were longtime uh, employees here. Um, you know, and then we've had some where we crossed the street quite a bit from Cascade to Liquids. So we're crossing that street and we've had several close calls with cars speeding up and, and flying really close to people and almost hitting them. We had an individual um, swerve at another individual um, and almost hit them. And when they continued on and crashed into a barricade, um, they fell out of their car unconscious. The ambulance had to come and apply Narcon to the individual to save his life. Um, but we had that, that was one of the instances. Um, we also had bullets that David had mentioned, but we've we found bullets lodged in our electrical wiring, which was actually about 10 feet in the air. So it was right above our office area. Um, so we found a few of those. We had some car chases that had ended. One car chase ended when there was a train across the tracks and it was carjacking people. And uh, they, they caught the individuals because they couldn't get past the train tracks. You know, we've had some others where um, the, the police had chased them into this area and they stopped, they got out, ran down the railroad tracks and the guy individual had a gun 
and they were able to they were able to catch the guy down the railroad tracks. So we've the point being there, there's been a lot of incidences that seem to be happening. And uh, you know, at our union meetings, this we have safety discussion. And since it's been closed, people have really been really been feeling safer and across back and forth across the street to the different businesses we have here. So um, uh, all of my union members would greatly appreciate it if we could get this closed down. So that's pretty much what I had to say. I thank you guys for your time. All righty. Thank you, Mr. Worth. Okay. Alderman Bosley, do you have any questions for the sponsor or the speakers? I don't have any questions, but I do have um, a comment. I'm right, uh, the Alderman, right across the intersection right there at Grand and 70. So I'm very, very familiar with uh, the type of issues that they are speaking of. I mean, it is terrible right there, um, especially during the weekends. People have no respect for the streets. The police are generally out there and they do donuts in the street with their guns out while the police stand there. Um, I mean, a ridiculous amount of disrespect sometimes uh, right there in that area. Um, I have seen uh, multiple efforts where you got the tow uh, company, I'm sorry, the city's tow yard out there. Um, with uh, the police officers, four or five officers with their lights flashing, them actually towing cars. And that seems to sometimes be the only thing that makes people hurry up and kind of get off the lot. But you still have those same individuals that leave, drive back and forth up and down Broadway, wait until the police leave so they can come right back there and congregate on the lot or that street right behind the gas station. And I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it. Uh, but it's right behind the uh, the BP right there. I mean, and that that is where a lot of those shootings take place at. Um, a lot of people have gotten shot right there along that that corridor. So it, it definitely is within uh, the, the city's best, uh, I think, interest to, to to close down that particular street, especially because it's going straight back to Procter and Gamble. That's nobody else back there, you know. So it's not hurting any other businesses. It doesn't restrict the flow of traffic to individuals who are in transit from one point from one point to the other unless you work down there there's really no reason for you to be down that far um where Procter and Gamble sits back in that that area back there uh, I've had family that worked back there used to pick them up regularly uh from work and this was uh years back so I definitely have dealt with the the, the speeding and um how difficult it is sometimes to navigate traffic especially when people are in those uh, uh what do you call them uh caravans per se sometimes you can have 20 30 cars driving together speeding and all of them are riding with each other um so it, it can get very difficult within that area i believe one of the things that has helped uh greatly here in the third ward reduce some of the the issues uh with crime as people still in and individuals that have been uh shooting in the area is closing off some of some of the streets we've seen a significant amount of traffic decrease in those areas where we have closed down streets set because people are uncomfortable sitting where it is they can't get out of it. You don't ever want to be a sitting duck. Um, and when things are closed off and there's only one way in, one way out, that's what it turns you into. Anybody can close you in and come shoot your car up or do whatever it is that you'd be thinking about doing, um, you know, if you were a person of interest to someone else. So that most certainly will help out with, uh, with the shootings, I believe, um, tremendously, right, specifically in that area. It won't stop you know, people congregating at the gas stations and the amount of traffic that comes down there to hang out and congregate, but it most certainly should do um, a significant, what should significantly reduce the amount of traffic pulling down where Procter & Gamble sits, where those employees go, and where, once again, traffic is unwarranted, unwarranted, and un unneeded if it's not by the employees or individuals who have business to do with that particular um, uh, business right there at Procter & Gamble. So I'm in full support of it. Also, uh, you know, I'm sure my colleagues are very familiar, but one of the things that we saw uh, a few years back uh, from the police division uh, when we went up and um, we're looking at, I think this is with uh, uh, Public Safety Director Jimmy Edwards. He showed us videos of those individuals that were doing donuts and shooting uh, AK-47 out the window while police were around. It was happening right at this gas station. Uh, the same things that we've seen here on the news in the recent years where you've had sightings of individuals doing exactly what I just said, it's happening right there at that intersection. So uh, once again, I think this is a, a good direction to go in. I appreciate you all, the woman Middle Brook and um, uh, the union there at Procter & Gamble for um, 
sometimes people are very, very finicky about closing stuff down, especially streets and that, you know, um, accessible drive, driving uh, streets. So I, you know, I just, I just appreciate you being a little bit, um, uh, just, just being willing to do what it takes. So uh, thank you all with that, IU, Chairman. Chairwoman. Okay. Um, Alderman Boyd, any questions? Madam Chair, I do not have any questions. It's pretty sad that we have to take measures like this, but it's the right thing to do if we want to protect the public and employees and businesses and help them, you know, stay in the city of St. Louis. So I am totally in full support. All right, thank you. Alderman Vaccaro, questions uh, or comments? Just a, well, first off, I'm in support of the bill and, and support of the alderwoman over there, but I'm just curious, how many employees does Procter & Gamble have over there? That's a guess, I, it, it's not a real, it's just a guess. Yeah, we have uh, over 530 employees and we employ another 500 contract partners. And we have some of the largest investments in the, in the, next, in the past 95 years going on right now. So it will be growing. That, that, I mean, just that's wonderful. Anyway, no, I am absolutely in support of this and in support of the alderwoman from that area. So no other comments or questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, alderwoman Boyd, any questions or concerns? I have no questions and I am in support of it. Thank you. Okay. Alderwoman Schweitzer, any questions or concerns? Thank you so much. I echo my colleagues. I'm in support of this. No questions or concerns. Thanks. Alderwoman from the 17th, any questions or concerns? Alderwoman Phil. Hello? Hello? She looks frozen. Yep. Okay. Yep, she is frozen. And I don't have any questions or concerns, so I'd entertain a motion that Board Bill 141 be passed out with due pass recommendation. So moved. I'm sorry, Second. So moved. <laughs> okay, Madam Clerk, I want to I want you to tell me who did what, okay? <laughs> now I did miss that one. <laughs> so it was it was it was Alderman Bosley made the uh, motion and I don't know and I don't know who made the second. I think I Boyd Boyd. And Boyd made the second at the same time, I thought. Yep. yep. And who did previous, previous role? role. Oh, you did, I did previous, previous role? role. Okay. I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Call for previous role. Any objections for previous role? Hearing none, Board Bill 141 is passed out with the due pass recommendation. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you, sponsor. Appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there any other committee discussion? I did, Alderman Vaccaro, I got your note, and I'll talk to you about that afterwards. I got your email, okay? Okay, thank you. Anything else? I guess I can ask this while we're here and we got them just super quick. Uh, Procter and Gamble got any openings right now? <laughs> hey man, I'm always trying to, you know, have a plug, have a plug they may have, I know, I'm always looking for employment, man. I gotta know. <laughs> you know, have a hiring firm or something. Well, make sure to make it safe. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll send I'll send Lisa um, how to apply and then she can share that with you. Lisa Middlebrooks. Okay, thank you. And, and then share it with anyone you know, because we definitely need good people. And we have a lot of parents. So thank you. And thank you for your thank support. You. OK. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody else? Hearing none, um, I move that we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? OK, by your motion, we all have adjourned. Um, until the next meeting. Thank you so much. Everyone have a great day. See you later this week.